With the release of The Flash, we now have two more live action bat suits which have appeared on the big screen. So in today's video, I thought it would be fun to rank all 16 of the live action bat suits from my least favorite to my favorite. Hello and welcome to Cinemaze. If you're new around here, please subscribe to see more videos like this. Also, I'm only ranking the live action suits from the theatrical films, so any suits which have appeared in TV shows aren't going to count, and I'm not going to include the suits from the Batman serials in the 40s. Yes, they are technically theatrical releases, but I don't think it's fair to include them in this list. And of course, this is my opinion on the suits, considering their design, their comic connections, their relevance to the story, if they're practical suits, and it is not my opinion on the films or the actors themselves, just their suits. So let's get right into the ranking. Number 16, the Batman and Robin Batsuit. This is George Clooney's main Batsuit from Batman and Robin. It's of course infamous for the bat nipples and sculpting around the body parts, supposedly influenced by ancient Greek statues, but it's just weird for a Batsuit, especially one designed to sell toys to children. Besides from that, it's completely monochromatic with a weird metallic finish, and so it all blends together, nothing really stands out or pops, and it just comes across very bland. Every Batman wears black eye makeup under the mask, but the eye holes here are so big that the makeup is so obvious, which just looks weird. Overall just a weird and bland suit, but it does canonically have ice skates built in, which is something I guess. Number 15, the Batman Forever suit. This is Val Kilmer's main bat suit, also known as the Panther suit, and this time it takes a design similar to Keaton's bat suits, but adds the ancient Greek influence again. Apparently Schumacher wanted a sense of beauty for this costume, which is weird for a bat suit, and especially weird when mixing it with the look of Keaton's darker and more gothic style. It gets higher than Clooney's first suit because this one is a much darker black instead of the weird metallic look, and it isn't completely monochromatic with some colour on the logo and the belt, which makes it stand out a bit more. While inferior to Keaton's suit in almost every way, it does improve on the manoeuvrability and flexibility of the Batsuit, making Batman's movements appear less stiff and awkward than Keaton, which is always a good thing. Number 14, the Batman and Robin Ice Armour. This is the second suit to appear in Batman and Robin worn by George Clooney, and this one acts as a defence against Mr. Freeze's ice rays. Apparently there was a deleted scene which showed the suit protecting Batman from the ice ray, which is literally the whole point of the suit, so it feels really weird to cut that out of the movie. This suit very much feels like it's included to sell toys, and even the texture of this suit looks plasticky like an action figure. While it's not the best design, I do like the addition of the silver parts adding some contrast to the suit, which helps to make it stand out more, which gets it above the other two suits. Oh, and there's no nipples, which is always a plus. Number 13, the Batman Forever Sonar Suit. This is the second suit to appear in Batman Forever worn by Val Kilmer, and again, it feels like a suit designed to sell more toys. That said, I do think it's an improvement over the main Batsuit in that film. It's called the sonar suit because for about one second Batman uses its sonar lenses to guide his Batarang, an idea which would be executed much better in the Dark Knight. Speaking of Nolan films, this suit actually influenced the Batman Begins costume and it was used by the actors for their screen test auditions for Batman Begins. Although this suit is mostly monochromatic, which I criticised Clooney's main suit for, I think it works better here because the suit itself has a more distinct look and unique style. Val Kilmer's other suit just feels like a bad copy of Keaton's and Clooney's just feels like that but painted black. This sonar suit feels like it's trying to be its own thing and not just copying Keaton's iconic style and it helps to give Val Kilmer's Batman his own look with the larger logo and grooves on the suit. Number 12, the Flash blue and grey suit. Next up we have one of the more recent additions to this list, Ben Affleck's suit from The Flash and it's a weird one. It takes the classic Affleck suit which is much higher up this list and just adds stuff to it. That suit is already designed to be a tactical suit but for some reason they add more tactical armour to it but it just looks unfinished and looks like a prototype. Normally behind the scenes looks of Bat suits look way worse than the finished product, but in this case, the behind the scene photos and even the action figures look better than the final version of the suit we see. The suit feels a bit more CG and digitally enhanced than the other bat suits, which is a shame. I do like that this is one of the only bat suits to have the classic grey and blue scheme from the comic, but I genuinely think this has been recolored digitally because, again, the behind the scene photos look to have different colours. Also, it has a weird mask which looks slightly smushed like a pug or a bulldog, and for some reason, they got rid of the voice changer, which was a nice detail in his previous suit. It feels like they included this suit just to have him have a new suit or to sell toys, but I'd rather them have just used his standard suit, or if they wanted to give us a blue and grey classic colour scheme, just recolour his standard suit rather than add all this extra pointless stuff to it. Number 11, the Nightmare Suit. Another suit worn by Ben Affleck, this time in the Nightmare sequences in Batman v Superman and Justice League. It's Ben Affleck's standard suit but with a trench coat, goggles and cargo trousers. It's a really cool look for an alternate version of Batman and it makes sense for the setting, although doesn't he get really hot in all of that? 
that gear. Overall, it's not really a bat suit, so it's not going to make it far up my ranking of bat suits. But for an alternate version of Batman in the future, it looks awesome. Number 10, Batman 66. Next up is the suit worn by Adam West in the 60s Batman series and the 1966 theatrical film. And of course, it's the least cinematic looking suit on this list, but it's exactly what it needs to be for the film that it's in. A fun, light, bright suit for a very campy film. It's reminiscent of the look of Batman in the comics from this era, which had also become more lighthearted compared with Batman's darker origin. And so it's actually a really good adaptation of what they were going for. Also, again, it's one of the only suits on this list to use the gray and blue color scheme, a traditional look for him in the comics. I like bat suits to have different colors rather than just black. So overall, this suit is exactly what it needs to be. It's got a good design, it's super iconic, and it's memorable, but of course, it doesn't hold up to some of the more cinematic suits later on this list. Number nine, the Dark Knight suit. The suit worn by Christian Bale in the Dark Knight and again in the Dark Knight Rises. Is this controversial? I feel like this is a bit controversial having it at only number nine, but this suit has never really stood out to me. It's almost entirely the same color except for the belt, which adds a nice bit of contrast and makes it stand out more than some of the other all black suits lower down this list. But I do wish there was more color in here. The suit has a lot of detail because of the armor that gets added in this film, but when it's all the same color, it all blends together and looks a bit cluttered. You can't even really see the bat logo. And if the argument is that it's all the same color to look stealthy and realistic, why does he have a gold belt? I also don't like how the cape is a completely different shade of black and material than the rest of the suit. That's not the way to add color to this. And it just makes the rest of the suit feel off black. I also don't like how the mask tucks in at the neck. It makes the Batman jawline look really weird. Okay, so I've been a bit harsh on this suit. So in terms of positives, it does feel like a realistic take on the bat suit. It fits into the world that Nolan created and it certainly has a better design than the suits lower down this list. And I like that even for a scene, it gives us the classic white Batman eyes, which he always has in the comics. Number eight, the Justice League tactical suit. This one is worn by Ben Affleck for the final battle in Justice League. It's a more heavily armored version of his standard suit and it makes sense in the context. He's fighting aliens, so he needs a stronger suit than usual, but he wants to be agile, so he doesn't want a suit as big as his Superman armor. While it can look a little awkward and bulky at times, it isn't all the same color, so the armor stands out more than in the Dark Knight suit. And in general, I think the amount of armor looks good and it feels like a nice compromise between agility and defense, showcasing a Batman who can adapt to the situation. But the main thing that holds this suit back are the goggles. I really don't like the eye goggles here. I think it looks way better without them. Yes, there are some similar eyes in the comics with the level wing bat suit, but for me, it just looks like Night Owl from Watchmen and I think they look awkward. Overall, a cool addition to Batman's wardrobe when he's in the mood to fight aliens. The contrast of the colors make the suit stand out more than the Dark Knight, but it's a little bit over designed. It makes Affleck look really wide and I think the goggles just look bad. Number seven, the Batman Begins suit. Following on from that, we have the suit from Batman Begins, a very similar suit to the Dark Knight, but slightly less heavily armored. And again, it has some of the same issues. It only really has color on the belt. The cape feels like it doesn't match the rest of the suit, feeling way too jet black and cloth-like. This time we have the opposite problem with the cowl, where it feels too wide and loose, making the Batman jawline weird again. But I think it's slightly better than the Dark Knight suit because it's not so cluttered. The lack of armor makes it feel less over-designed and the Batman logo stands out way more this time. It has less armor and it feels more streamlined than agile, but it actually feels more intimidating as for some reason, the armored suit feels slightly smaller. Again, it fits into the world created nicely and it has an explanation as to why it exists. It's essentially a slightly nicer designed and better material version of the Panther suit earlier on in this list. To me, it feels more Batman-y than the Dark Knight suit and the tactical suit and less like an armored robot. But again, I wish there was more color here because the design itself is actually pretty nice, but it gets lost in the monochromatic look. Like, look how good this recolor of the suit looks. Number six, the Flash Michael Keaton suit. Another new addition to this list is Michael Keaton's suit that he wears in the Flash. And this is a nice modern adaptation of the classic Keaton suit, giving it slightly more updated materials, but maintaining the basic design of his suit. Really, it feels like a mix between the classic Keaton suit and the Batman Begins suit material. And it's exactly what it needs to be, a slightly updated design of Keaton's suit that maintains the silhouette and iconography from his era. It does at times feel a bit too CGI as they replace him with CGI body doubles and it moves very differently than we see from Keaton in his films. Also, it loses the yellow belt, which added more color and contrast to the suit. It doesn't get higher up my list because it's not doing anything special or new, but it's exactly what it needs to be. And when Keaton puts this suit on, it feels like Batman. Number five, the Batman v Superman mech suit. Kicking off the top five is the bat suit that Batman wears to fight Superman in Batman v Superman. And I think it's awesome. Firstly, it has comic book origins, really taking inspiration from the armored suit in The Dark Knight Returns and making it work for the big screen. Secondly, the suit actually exists. Some studios would be tempted to go CGI, but they did make an actual physical suit to be worn on set, which I think is great. Despite being 
very bulky and armored, it still feels like Batman. We also get the white Batman eyes, which I love. I wish more suits gave us the white comic book eyes. Also, they understand how to use this suit. When I ranked the Spider-Man suits, I said I liked the Iron Spider suit, but it stuck around for way too long. It should be an event suit just appearing in the Avengers movies, but it actually ended up being in five films, which is crazy and it makes it not feel like Spider-Man. The armored bat suit understands this. Sure, in universe, it would make sense to wear this to fight Steppenwolf, but if he always wore this every time, it wouldn't feel like Batman. And instead, they didn't make this suit stick around for too long. It's designed to fight Superman and it does exactly that. Overall, a great design suit with comic influences that understands exactly what the purpose of the suit is and doesn't stick around for too long. It feels like Batman despite being a very different suit, but the more traditional suits are going to make it higher up this list. Number four, the Batman 89 suit. Coming in at number four is the Michael Keaton suit worn in Tim Burton's Batman. And man, this is just such an iconic design. It fits into the gothic world they created so well. While it's mostly black, it's contrasted nicely with a yellow comic accurate logo and belt, which adds a splash of color to stop it all blending together. And I like that this is all jet black, not a slightly off black like the Nolan suit. While it has serious movement issues with Batman barely being able to fight or even turn his head, it's a suit designed to intimidate, to have an imposing silhouette and screen presence, and it does that perfectly. Despite Keaton being the smallest Batman actor, the suit makes him feel larger and intimidating. It understood what aspects of the comic suit to adapt to the big screen and to make it cinematic and still feel like Batman. Just a great design and super iconic. It feels like Batman. It's so iconic that it made general audiences think bat suits had to be black all the time, which wasn't actually something we saw in the comics until later in 1995. And I think that all black works well here. I just wish the other versions of Batman didn't keep doing it. Number three, the Batman Return suit. In my top three is the suit worn by Keaton in Batman Returns. And it's essentially the same as the 89 suit, but with a few small improvements. This time we get some armoring around the chest instead of the rubber muscle suit. I think this makes the suit look a bit more modern and less stiff. I like how the cape comes around the front a bit more over the shoulders, like he's hiding in the shadows more and the cape transforms into a glider, which is awesome. The logo on this one is improved to be more traditional. Despite the 89 film having the iconic logo on the poster, the actual suit has a slightly different bat symbol, which the Batman return suit fixes to be more traditional. Honestly, my only issue with this suit is in the scene where he takes the mask off. Firstly, we see his eye makeup just disappear between cuts and we see how weird the eyes look without the makeup. And secondly, it's just bizarre to me that he has to rip the rubber off the mask just to take it off. Like it seems so impractical. But overall, that's a really minor nitpick. And I think this is an awesome suit, which makes a few improvements over the 89 suit. Number two, the Batman suit. The suit worn by Robert Pattinson in the Batman. And in my opinion, this is how you do an armored bat suit. It's gray and black, so different parts stand out, which helps the different elements of the design to come through while still sticking to one of the classic comic book color schemes. But it still feels grounded and stealthy, allowing Batman to work in the shadows. It feels influenced by the more armored look of some of the Arkham games. While it looks heavily armored, it doesn't look too bulky or restrictive like we've seen with the other armored bat suit. It feels designed for a version of Batman who isn't necessarily the best fighter like a ninja, but instead surviving on pure force with a suit designed to be armed to the teeth to get Batman through any brawl with gadgets on his arms, his belt, and even his bat logo. Because this is a more grounded take on the character, it feels like a suit that fits into that stylized version of Gotham. It doesn't feel like a suit made out of an impossible material or a military armor. Instead, it feels like a real suit pieced together by someone with resources. And this works because it's still early in Batman's career. It doesn't feel perfect. And it does just kind of feel pieced together. Like when we see his gliding wings, they don't look like the fantastical gliding cape from Batman Returns, but instead an early prototype, which just about works. What really sets this suit apart for me is how emotive it feels. We spend a lot of time with this version of Batman in the suit. And while he doesn't say much, the suit allows him to emote really well. While I've expressed my wish for the white bat eyes, here often through looks he gives to Gordon or to a young orphan, you understand how this Batman is feeling. Similarly, the way his boots sound walking on the floor or the slight squeak in his gloves can convey his feelings or the feelings of others in the room, which is great sound design for a suit. I think this is one of the best cowls here. His jaw and neck don't look awkward. And again, it helps him to emote, but it still feels intimidating. Overall, this is a great take on an armored bat suit. And I'm interested to see how this one changes over time. Number one, the Batman v Superman bat suit. Coming in at number one is the standard bat suit worn by Ben Affleck in BVS, Suicide Squad, and Justice League. Yes, technically the Justice League version is a slightly different suit with extra padding around the muscles and a slightly different mask, but for the most part, they're the same design and so I'm counting them as one. And yeah, I think this is the best bat suit we've ever seen. It takes its own approach to the suit and instead of going for an armored metallic look like almost all the other bat suits, instead, it's a more flexible material. Like we see in the comics where Batman is usually always wearing a more cloth looking suit. It was also the first time 
time we properly saw the classic comic grey and black colour scheme in film and it's massively inspired by the Dark Knight Returns comic. It's a very simple design and I think that works better for Batman instead of the armoured looks. This more flexible appearance worked really well for a version of Batman in a more comic booky world where he is highly trained and agile and it allows us to see the best Batman fight scene we've ever got. This was the first time we got a Batsuit that could move completely freely and actually felt like a ninja. It also makes Batman look very intimidating whether that's him hiding in the shadows like an urban legend or facing you in a fight and imposing you with his massive size. Also it feels like its own thing with the shorter bat ears and larger logo giving this suit and Affleck their own unique look. Also it has a voice changer which is just a nice detail to help Batman hide his identity and not have to do a stupid Batman voice. Because we're in a more comic booky universe here it allows the suit to be flexible but also bulletproof and full of gadgets and I favour this more flexible look over the armoured suits because it helps to encompass all aspects of the Batman character whether that's his stealth, intimidation, detective skills or agile fighting style. And overall this bat suit just feels the most like Batman from the comics and it also has comic connections. It feels super cinematic, the colours are great, the actor looks great in the suit, it doesn't feel restrictive and it just feels like Batman. So all this adds together for this suit to come in at number one. I hope you enjoyed my ranking. Let me know your rankings down below in the comments. Do you agree? Which suit is your favourite? If you like this, I've also ranked the Spider-Man suit, so check that out if you haven't already. Let me know any other superhero suits you want me to rank down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, please give the video a like. It helps my channel out so much. And if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe for more videos like this on DC, Marvel, Star Wars, or anything else amazing going on in cinema. But for now, thanks for watching Cinemaze.